after presenting with no nose bleeding. CBC showed the following, WBC 2500, hemoglobin 8.4, platelet is 11,000 and ANC is the 300. Reticulocyte count was 1.4 percentage and absolute reticulocyte count was 40,000, which clearly says that this patient is having a hypoproliferative anemia. Flow cytometric evaluation revealed the presence of a PNH clone and it was positive in 8 percent of the neutrophils. That's very important. LDH and haptoglobulin uh, were normal, suggesting that there is no element of extravascular or intravascular hemolysis. Bone marrow biopsy showed markedly decreased trilineage hematopoiesis with only 5 to 10 percent cellularity, which clearly is very low for the age. Cytogenetic evaluation revealed 46XY in 100 percent of all the metaphase chromosomes. Of course, he is a male, so the cytogenetic uh, evaluation should reveal 46XY only. He was treated with supportive care and donor search for allogenic stem cell transplantation was initiated. Two older sisters were confirmed as haploidentical, which means half match, not a full match. But there was also another donor, but he's an unrelated donor who's having a 10 by 10 match. Which are the following treatment options you would recommend? You will go for haploidentical stem cell transplantation from sister or horse ATG, cyclosporin and l -trombo pack, or matched unrelated donor stem cell transplant or a rabbit ATGN cyclosporin. So what you would do here. So even before uh, going into the discussion of the answer, first let us discuss something about aplastic anemia in a nutshell. So we have secondary aplastic anemia which is usually due to some drugs or probably uh, due to some viral infections as we all know. This patient do not have any background history that is suggestive of a secondary aplastic anemia. So it's not a secondary aplastic anemia in this guy. So it's very likely to be a primary aplastic anemia. So primary aplastic anemia can be further divided into acquired forms of primary aplastic anemia and inherited forms of primary aplastic anemia. This patient is not having an inherited primary aplastic anemia. Why? Because inherited forms of plastic anemia will have some other associated clinical features like patients may have congenital problems, congenital malformations like uh, facial dysmorphisms or cardiovascular problems or genitourinary problems or GI problems or ectodermal dysplasia and skin and nail problems. So something will be there. And apart from that, they will have a family history, most of them. Here it's not the case. And apart from that, very importantly, they will not have a detectable PNH clone. It's a very, very important point. Remember PNH is an acquired stem cell disorder. And presence of a PNH clone doesn't mean it's always paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. That is why we use flow cytometry as the gold standard investigation for diagnosing PNH. Because in the flow cytometry, if you are detecting some PNH clone that essentially rules out an inherited problem because PNH is almost always an acquired problem. And the size of the PNH clone will tell you what is the disorder that you are dealing with. And especially this has to be looked in the granulocytes, for that matters in the neutrophils. If the size of the PNH clone is less than 10 percentage, then it probably indicates a pure plastic anemia. If it's in the 10 to 39 percent range, then it probably tells you it's an aplastic anemia PNH overlap. And if it is more than 40 percentage and up to 99 percentage, then it probably tells you it's a classic PNH. So that is why flow is going to be very, very helpful in telling you what is the type of disorder that you're dealing with. Because this patient is having only 8 percentage PNH, uh, PNH clone size, I can clearly say this is not an inherited aplastic anemia and this must be an acquired primary aplastic anemia. And how you're going to make a diagnosis of plastic anemia? So patients are going to have pancytopenia and patients will have a acellular or a hypocellular marrow. And there will be trilineage hypocellularity, not just involving one or two lineages. There will be a trilineage hypercellularity. And the cellular elements will be replaced with fat. This is a plastic anemia. And how you are going to treat these individuals? So primary acquired plastic anemia, how are you going to treat? Look at the age. 
where the patient is younger or slightly older. In younger individuals, the primary treatment option, the first line treatment option is going to be allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. So that is going to be the primary first line treatment option. But remember, the best donor for allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation will be a matched sibling donor. This is something that you need to know for your entire hematology. Matched sibling donor or we can call it as a matched related donor. So this is the best donor. There are multiple different types of donors, but this is the best donor. If it is available, then go for allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. If it is not available, so let us look at this example. In this example, you have a relative, a donor uh, who is a relative, two older sisters are there, but they are only haploidentical, which means only half matched. They are not fully matched. So in this situation, you are not having a matched sibling donor. So what you're going to do is, you're going to go for triple immunosuppression, triple immunosuppressive therapy in these patients. On the other hand, if the patient is slightly older, like age more than 40, there's no need for allogenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. It's better that you go for triple immunosuppressive therapy as a first line treatment. Maybe if they are not responding, then allogenic stem cell transplantation will be an option for them. But older patients generally go for immunosuppressive therapy as the first line. So what do you mean by the term triple immunosuppressive therapy? It contains anti-thymosoglobin, generally horse ATG is uh, considered to be better as that of the rabbit anti-thymosoglobin. So horse ATG plus a calcium neurin inhibitor, typically a cyclosporin, plus you can also add l pack. Technically, it is not an immunosuppressive agent, but addition of l pack has uh, shown some durable responses and good results in a lot of trials. So that is why this is going to be the option for this patient. So the right answer for this question is going to be option B. The reason, because he's younger, plus at the same time, he's not having a matched sibling donor. So that is the reason I'm going to go for triple immunosuppressive therapy in this patient. The right answer for this question is going to be option B.